Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Mass of the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's Mass, we continue to pray for your intentions, pray for your needs, and pray for those of your loved ones and family. Pray for the areas of struggle and trials and challenge in your life, and ask that God may grant us grace to follow his lead. Pray for our sick, Pray for the distressed, pray for the grieving, pray for those who are looking for a path forward in some area in their lives, that the light of God's grace may shine bright in their lives. Pray for all those who have asked our prayers, those who have birthdays, anniversaries, or other events. We bring all of those intentions to God. And I invite you to bring your personal intentions and let us pray together from this altar. Our opening hymn today is City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep. A new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light the lord of our longing has conquered the night let us build a city of god may our tears be turned into dancing for the lord our light and our law has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Holy Mass, let us call to mind our sins, and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, may he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You will honor the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, give out of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may, num you may not show in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out, violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grew weary, holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our response to the psalm is, My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God, whom I seek. For you my flesh pines, and my soul thirsts like the earth, lifeless and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed towards you in the sanctuary, to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of the, of the banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I, sh I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Second reading. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of your hearts that you may know what is the hope that belongs to your call. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay each according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I hope today uh, is a better day for you and I hope that you are still hanging in there and holding tough even though it feels like giving up, walking away, abandoning the fight. I hope that from this Mass and through this Mass you will find grace to hang in and to keep fighting and to keep striving and to keep walking and to stay closer with Jesus. And that's my hope for you. Today in these uh, readings, we hear the Lord Jesus tell us of his impending sorrow 
Yesterday we celebrated the passion of John the Baptist. Today we hear Jesus um, almost like giving us an idea of what awaits him as he was going to Jerusalem. And I like to focus on a few things here. First, the reaction of Peter to that information. I think the reaction of Peter would be your reaction and my reaction in the face of impending pain or suffering. We pray and in, in where I come from in Nigeria, people will cast and bind and they tell you not my portion or not my cup because no one loves to suffer. No one loves pain. No one enjoys pain. Nobody. So we avoid pain and we avoid suffering, you know, almost like a leper. And so when Peter heard Jesus talk about suffering and pain and death, and those are all terrible things. And he was just like, God forbid, that, that would never happen to you. Never at all. That could never be your portion. It could never be your cup. Now, this is only because, like you and like me, we see things only from one side. For instance, we look at suffering only from the side of pain. We don't see what God sees. That inside suffering, there is also a process of growth, a process of renewal, a process of birth, spiritual birth and spiritual experience. We, we don't see from pain more than just the physical effect it has or the emotional effect it has in our lives. And that's why the Lord Jesus said to Peter, says, you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. That means as you and I see pain. We hate to hear that we are sick or someone we care about is sick or might die as though death is the worst thing that could ever happen. Look, Jesus came into this world and went through everything, including death, to help us recognize that death is not an evil. Death isn't an evil. Death is a necessary part of human experience, a part that allows us entrance into life eternal. Suffering isn't evil. Yes, suffering is painful, but suffering can also be redemptive, and all, the, all that depends on how you and I approach suffering and pain. We could either choose to do what Peter was doing, God forbid. Unfortunately, believe it or not, because human pain and suffering, or pain and suffering, are such intricate part of our lives that it's impossible to live through life and never have to experience one or two or both or all of them. It's impossible. There's no one. I experience pain. I experience suffering. We all experience that. Now, if we choose to react the way human beings do as Peter did, God forbid, that means me rebelling against suffering, rebelling against pain, never wanting to be part of my life. Now, my attitude will be one of complaining, grumbling, crying, screaming, and sometimes even cursing and cursing even God. We feel like we are abandoned. We feel like alone. We feel... Now, that does not help. All it does is it puts us in a mindset of losing and losers. Because there's one who is losing. Your suffering is on the driver's seat. You are on the passenger. And you don't like the way this driving is going. That's how this all feels. So what the Lord is doing here is He wants us to be the one driving the agenda, even with our suffering and even with our pain. Say, for instance, okay, I lost my job. I could choose to spend every day grieving the loss of my job. Or I could accept whatever has happened. I am not the first to have lost a job. You are not the first to have lost a job. There are others who have lost their jobs. And even in those losses, we're able to take the route that the Lord is showing us here and move from a lower level to a higher level. So sometimes, you know, 
the, 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 our suffering or our challenges or our pain could also be a stepping stone depending on how you're looking at it. And that's why the Lord said, if you look at it from how God sees it, it may not be that dangerous. It may not be that fearful. It may not be that scary. It might just be laid out well for you. But how can we see what God sees and know what the Almighty knows? The Lord says that in the second part of this reading. So I, I don't know what, what you are dealing with right now in your life. Maybe you are at the point where you feel you can't take it anymore. This is just too much. You don't think God cares about you or he hears you. Or he even cares to know what is going on in your life. I want to tell you he does care and he knows. But he is waiting for you to do what the Lord Jesus is saying here in the second part of this reading. Because as long as you sit where you are, just complaining and grieving and screaming and yelling, and yeah, there's not much the Almighty can do for you in that place. Jesus said, said, the Lord said to his disciples, that means all those who are following him, including you and me, he said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me, must do three things. Three. That means whoever wishes to come with me to Jerusalem, that means come with me and see what, how to suffer and how to triumph through suffering. Because he was on his way to Jerusalem. He says, whoever wants to come after me, whoever wants to come with me and see, do the th three things. First, you must, must deny yourself. Now, I want to speak very briefly about self-denial. Now, self-denial is not deny taking care of yourself. I know a lot of people have emphasized, well, don't take care of yourself. Look haggard, look dirty, look poor, look whatever, look ridiculous. Now, nah, there's nothing. I don't know um, how God would be so prideful when you stop taking care of yourself. Meanwhile, he said for you to love yourself. So, God wants you to take care of yourself. Treat yourself well. Take care of yourself. What God is saying about denial here is don't be attached to things. Don't be attached to anything. The reason why that is important, if you are attached to anything, when you lose it, the impact of loss is just too severe. The only person or the only thing that you and I must attach ourselves to is Jesus and nothing else. Nothing else. Everything else causes us pain when we lose it. Jesus, we could never lose unless we choose to walk away. So when he says, deny yourself, he was saying, do not attach yourself to anything temporal. Whether that's a person, that's a thing, money, wealth, class, status, whatever it is, don't attach yourself to anything as though it gave you meaning. There's only one meaning giver. It is Jesus the Christ. So if we must attach ourselves to anyone, we must extricate ourselves from attachment to all, all other things and then align ourselves with Christ. So he says the first thing we must do, if we want to go down and learn how to endure pain and suffering and not allow our pain and our suffering to crush us and to crumble and for us to crumble before it, says we must learn to detach ourselves holy detachment from everything else so that everything else we have temporal would have an instrumental value because everything God has given us on earth has an instrumental value and we must use it that way. Everything material has an instrumental value. There is only one thing that has an absolute value and that is Jesus the Christ. That is God. So we must learn, first thing, detach, free yourself, whether it's your physical health, how you look, whatever it is that God has given to you, don't be attached to it. Yes, use it, take care of it, let it serve you. When you are attached to it, each time you lose it, it is devastating, it is crushing. And the God said the second thing, then take up your cross. So deny yourself. Take up whatever situation life is put in front of you. That is your cross. Take it. Don't leave it on the ground. Don't sit down and fold your hands and be looking at it. Don't sit down and cry. Says, pick it up. Now, to pick, 
you must must have some, some some physical, moral, or even spiritual energy to lift up anything. God will not ask you to lift up your, your, your cross if he knew you don't have the ability to do it. He knows you have the ability. He knows you have everything it takes to do it. He only is saying to you, change your mindset. Change your attitude. If you change your mindset and change your attitude, you'll be surprised yourself that you can pick up that cross and walk with it and not crumble on underneath that cross. So he says, take up your cross. But you, take up that cross right now. Quit crying about that cross. Quit, quit complaining about that cross. Quit grieving over that cross. Pick it up right now. Whatever it is, pick it up right now. And he says the last, the, the last thing. Follow me. He didn't say, find a way yourself. He's not telling you to find a way yourself. He's not, he knows you cannot do that. He says, come with me. So I, I will lead. I will show you how to do it. Come with me. Now, if you are willing to do these three things, I assure you, very, very quickly, you will recognize how your life is changing. Because every human problem does have an answer. But you must change your attitude and see what the Almighty sees and know what God Almighty knows. Just so you can recognize how to fit each thing where it belongs. And very soon, your life will be a beauty. Your life will bring you happiness and joy and contentment. Not because everything was so good, but because all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, work it unto good for those who trust and love God. So, so my dear friends, I pray and hope that whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation is, you will do what the Lord Jesus prescribed for his disciples. And that includes you and me and everyone else in the face of life and in the face of whatever life throws at you or is thrown at you, at you right now. I conclude with the words of Paul. Hear what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, and that's hallelujah verse. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of your hearts. That means, may the Lord shine his light in the eyes of your heart, just so that you are able to see what hope belongs to you. What hope belongs to you, even in that situation that you don't, don't like, that you would wish was forbidden, that you would wish was taken away, that you would wish you didn't have to face, that you could recognize what powerful hope God has in that very situation. As always, I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. By self-denial, we take up the cross each day, walking in the footsteps of our master. Let us pray for others. And so cast of the selfishness which keeps us apart from our God. For our Pope, our bishops, 
who carried the cross of pastoral care and responsibility, that God may guide and lead them just so they could lead the church and its people. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in government and industry who use greed and power to dominate, that God may help them detach from a mindset of dominance to one of service for those under them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For dry souls thirsting for God, for those who are bearing the burden of human pain and suffering, for those scared and living in fear, for those who have abandoned their calling, that they may feel the strength from God's grace, reviving their, their dead bodies and spirits and souls and picking them up to follow the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a share in the courageous faith of Mary, our blessed mother, and for her examples, that we may watch and listen and follow her leading as she goes through and leads us from the pain and fear and dread of human life to the feet of her son's cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked our prayers and for those who need our prayers, the sick, the poor, the homeless, the imprisoned, the aborted, the abandoned, the abused, the oppressed, the unemployed, and all those who live worrying about tomorrow. That God, whose grace would never abandon his people, may grant his grace freely unto them and may help them find the way forward. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead and for those who desire to save their souls, especially people that we know who have died at this time, that God may forgive their sins and grant them rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for your own needs and for the needs of your families and for all those who celebrate birthdays or anniversaries today or other events in their lives for those who have special and particular intentions that they have offered here this morning that God who loves and cares may take care of all of those intentions that he may grant them speedily let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer we ask our blessed mother to intercede for us as we say the hail holy queen Mother of mercies, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor by the children of Eve. To you do we stand up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn to most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Let us pray. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, receive the prayers of a pilgrim people seeking to discover your will by walking in the footsteps of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name. For I the good of all his church. Amen. Let us pray. May this sacrifice, this sacred offering, O oh Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what we celebrate in mystery, we may accomplish with power. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always stands everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving itself is your gift, since our praise is at nothing to your greatness, but profit us for our salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with one voice we are praying. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray using the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant for our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. And from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. 
May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let us ask for grace for spiritual communion. Most merciful, most powerful, ever present God. Today you call us to learn from you. To deny ourselves. To take up our cross. And learn to follow you. We beg, O oh God, that the grace from this sacrament may fill us with such grace that doing these three things may become more easy and less difficult. And we are able to reject and to deny whatever entangles us. And so have the courage to pick up our crosses and, of course, the desire to follow after your footsteps. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My dear friends, before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to you and hopefully wish you a blessed week. Hopefully, um, pray that God may guide you, watch over you, protect you, shield you, and help you through this entire week that you may see the manifestation of God's grace every day in your life. If you forget anything and everything I said, don't forget that you remain in the light of God Almighty, that God loves you very much. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snow of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell, spend on all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. To the prayers of our Blessed Mother, the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn today will be Abide with me. All bide with me. Fast for the even tide. The darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When all the help, past fail and comforts flee. Help of the helpless who abide with me. Come not in terror as a king of kings, but kind and good with healing in thy wings. Tears for all foes. In heart of every plea, come, friends of sinners, those abide with me.